but it's true. And that is really what self-actualization was all about, was the idea of being all you could be, or Maslow used to say, when what ought to be just is. And that's when you're feeling that. You can feel that in life when what ought to be just is, when it just sort of feels like you're in the flow. Um, so I was getting really into this, and I started talking with my senior managers in the company about this. Now you can imagine the senior managers in the company are looking, they're all in that place of fear, like, because it's natural where you go, you get scared. And we have a bunch of owners and investors that we're accountable to who are also very scared. So I started asking them to ask themselves about what it is that we do as leaders in the company. And I came up with the thought of, well, Maslow's famous because, in fact, so really famous within the human potential movement, right? I mean, Maslow died in 1970, but his influence in the 70s was very much toward the human potential movement, about li people living up to their potential. So I started saying, well, isn't that what leaders are about? We're about actually helping uh, tap into the potential and actualize it into reality. And we're supposed to do that for our employees, our customers, and, and also our investors. So that's really what I, I started framing this in a way so that our, our managers in the company could say, well, maybe this Maslow thing does make sense. And, and we asked the question, if humans can aspire to self-actualization, why can't a company? If companies are really just collections of humans, why can't there be an actual, a self-actualized company? So we started by actually taking Maslow's hierarchy of needs and applying it just to the hotel experience of a customer. So you can, and you can look at this. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to read each one of them, but you can see that basically there are some basic needs that a customer has, which is a clean and comfortable bed. And as you move up this pyramid, there are higher needs for customers in a hotel. But this is true of any customer. This is true of your customers if you have a business, no matter what kind of business you have. There's some basic needs, and then there's some higher needs. So as we started talking about this more, I saw some heads you know, nod, and people actually, managers in the company said, OK, I, I get it, I get it. This isn't just Chip being his new age wacky self. Chip may, ha may be onto something. And so we started actually asking ourselves, well, if you took these, these levels, these five levels of the pyramid, what are the, are there really themes here? And there really are three themes. And this is where I'm going to put on my Professor Conley hat for the next few minutes to talk about Maslow applied to business and the themes associated with business and how this can relate to your business. So there are really th three themes here. If you think about Maslow, at the base of, his of the pyramid are physiological and safety needs. And those are survival needs. And generally speaking, that's where fear happens in companies. When people fear, have fear, whether it's an investor fears that they're not going to get the return on investment they wanted, whether it's a customer who has fear that they didn't get what they were expecting, or whether it's an employee who has fears about their compensation or their just basic survival, those are, those are the survival needs of people. We all have roles. Sometimes we have roles as, a, as, a, as, a, as an employee. Sometimes we have a role as a customer. Sometimes we have a role as an investor. But we all have survival needs in, in those roles. Above that are the social belonging and esteem needs, which are the succeed needs. So that's the second level. But at the top of the pyramid is where the interesting stuff happens. And it's where transformation happens. And a transformed employee, customer, or investor. That's where the self-actualization self happens. 